So law enforcement, whether it's sheriff, local PD, or the ATF is knocking on your door and you wanna know what your rights are. Hopefully this is not the time when you're watching this video. Hopefully you're watching this video in advance, but I wanna cover the three most common ways that law enforcement will be able to basically pierce the Fourth Amendment and get into your home that I see real live in court. My name is Tom Grieve. I'm a former state criminal prosecutor, criminal defense attorney. Guys, let's get into it. So I'm gonna give you the three most common tactics that I see work day in, day out for law enforcement to basically get through things. Yeah, I realize not all these are exactly tactics, but they're just the most common ways. And I'm going to give you a bonus feature at the very end of this video. That's something that everybody needs to know if they're envisioning that they could possibly have some sort of conversation like this with law enforcement. But first, I just want to touch on two words, exclusionary rule. These two words are why this matters. This is basically the whole doctrine, oftentimes called the fruit of a poisonous tree, if you really want to get technical in law, that says, look, the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment, it matters. If law enforcement violates the Constitution, if they violate the Fourth Amendment, and if your defense attorney throws a flag and the judge agrees, that evidence that they obtained subsequent to their illegal search that could all be suppressed, excluded, thrown out of the case against you. And while, yes, I understand that this can lead to some particularly distasteful outcomes, i.e. local drug dealers and hoodlums going free because the evidence got thrown out. Of course, the counterpoint is, well, do you want to do it with individual rights? Because that hasn't really worked out too well in the 20th century and the course of history before that. It's in essence the price we pay the piper in order to live in a society where individual rights are protected. That out of the way, because I know if I don't cover that, someone's going to be commenting on it. Someone probably will comment on it regardless. Let's get to the three most common things. Number one, by far, consent. This is the number one most common thing I see. Law enforcement shows up at someone's door and yeah, oh yeah, come on in. Oh, it's raining, it's hot, it's cold, whatever the case may be. Yeah, go ahead, come on in. And guys, there's something very important. I want you to imagine that when you open and close your door, that threshold from the doorway, thresholds, by the way, the legal term on that, that's like a force field. Once law enforcement crosses that force field, it's going to be a different game because now they're inside your home. So the Fourth Amendment and, of course, your castle is your home, your home is your castle, that is at your peak in your home. But once law enforcement's inside because you've consented, that's going to change the game substantially. So the name of the game for law enforcement is to cross the threshold and get in. The name of the game for you, the concerned citizen watching this video, if you do want to exercise your rights is to make sure that they cannot cross that threshold. Keep in mind, consent can be verbal, such as, yeah, officer, come inside. It can be nonverbal as far as I'm going to hold open the door and gesture for them to come inside or something like that too. Okay. And officers are very, very trained. They're very, very good usually as far as being able to just casually ask, Hey, you know, can we just come inside? It's cold. It's hot. Whatever the case may be, as I mentioned. So you have to be careful about those things. Another very common thing you have to be careful about, by the way, is if you do not live alone, if you live with a spouse, a partner, friend, roommate, whatever the case may be, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen cases where, Hey, the officers knock on the door, mom, wife, husband, someone who doesn't know what's going on or just don't know their rights, they think, oh yeah, I have to let them in because they're wearing a badge. Not true. Unless they've got a warrant, we're going to get to that. So you have to be very careful about those sorts of things. The second most common thing I see, and this is particularly applicable to automobile searches, but it can and often does extend to the house, something called plain sight. Plain sight doctrine is pretty straightforward. I want you to imagine that you're out in your car and you live in a state where marijuana is illegal and there's a little bit of marijuana crumb, shake, whatever it is you want to call it, that's on your dashboard or is in the back seat or something like that. And if you just can't fathom, people might have cannabis, then imagine whatever it is that you, that's illegal. And it's laying out. The officer just walks by, they're allowed to look in and they see it in plain sight, game on. That's what happens next. Likewise, if officers are walking down the street, okay, or they're approaching your house and they see something through the window in plain sight, that may, case by case basis, that may allow them to get inside the home. So you always have to be cautious about what you have in plain sight. And keep in mind, plain sight can also not be your eyes. It can also be your nose, depending upon what kind of substances or things we could be talking about here. The third thing that we need to get to is the thing that I know that you're all wondering about. And by the way, again, don't forget about the fourth thing we're going to slide in here at the very end. And that's probable cause. 
There's two ways that probable cause works, and no, we're not going to make this a law treatise on exactly what's probable cause. How is that different than reasonable suspicion? If you want that, let me know in the common field. Probable cause, you can work on a warrant basis or an exigent circumstances basis. Warrant's probably what you've seen in the movies. In other words, yeah, the cops show up, they present you some sort of document. It's a warrant. It allows them to search at a certain time for certain things within a certain scope. So maybe it's you can search a particular room, the garage, maybe it's everything, maybe it's extraordinarily limited, they're only allowed to search a particular safe. Again, those details ought to be on that cover sheet that they give you. But what sometimes I see people ask about that they do not give you right there and then at the scene is the affidavit in support of that warrant. In other words, the, okay, how did you get this information? Why is this allowed? Maybe you do get that, maybe you don't. That will vary from state to state, case by case, but you will eventually be entitled to that. But I want to make something very clear to you. Even if the warrant is subsequently thrown out for being illegal in court, if you resist or obstruct that warrant, it may be a crime. So the safest advice, again, subject to state by state, so check your local listings, but the safest advice that virtually any attorney can give you is, look, if you're being served with a warrant, raise your rights, make it clear that you're not going to obstruct the warrant, but you're not consenting to any searches or seizures or anything of the sort, because this will allow your attorney to subsequently challenge things in court. Because I have seen prosecutors argue during a warrant search, after the fact in court, yeah, there was a warrant here, but then they totally consented to the search of the whole place or whatever particular room if it was outside the scope of the warrant, whatever the case may be. So just because there's a warrant in place doesn't mean that you have to consent. If officers do not get a warrant, they may still be allowed in through the Fourth Amendment into your home, into your dwelling, if there's exigent circumstances. Exigent circumstances have been defined by a court as when an emergency situation requiring swift action to prevent imminent danger to life or serious damage to property or to forestall the imminent escape of a suspect or destruction of evidence. There is no ready litmus test for determining whether such circumstances exist, and in each case, the extraordinary situation must be measured by the facts known by the officials. End quote. Okay, in English, we're basically talking about three things when we're talking about exigent circumstances. A situation where people are in imminent danger, so grandpa's collapsing of a heart attack and the officer can see them through the window. They can break down the front door to get in and help. Okay, so that could be one situation. Or they see grandpa being attacked by someone. That could be another situation, right? So you could have a medical event. You could have a physical force encounter. Number two, a suspect's escape is imminent. Kind of speaks for itself. Or here's the big one. Number three, evidence faces imminent destruction. So we all know, of course, the classic example of drugs being flushed down because we've all seen those movies. But what about situations where, I don't know, let's say Pistol braces could be getting detached because the ATF has said that pistol brace only turns a pistol into a rifle when it's attached. So there could be situations like that here. And no, before you get angry at me, I'm not giving them ideas. Trust me, they're aware of all these ideas that are already out there. But you can see how these exigent circumstances can almost write themselves under certain situations. What can you do about this now? Well, first off, talk to the people who you live with to educate them and make sure they are aware of the law and make sure that they know about the usual traps and they know about the usual ways that officers use to get in. Stop posting pictures, memes, and aggressive comments that will come back to haunt you on social media and the internet. Yeah, I get it. You have a First Amendment right. No one's taking that away. I'm simply reminding you that it is not an intrusion on your First Amendment right when you hear these things read back against you in court down the line as exhibits in your case. It happens to people every single day. So unless you want to risk winning the legal Darwin Award, be careful about what you post out there. And I'm not suggesting it's always fair, but I am telling you that that's life. So before I get to the extra bonus strategy that frankly, everybody needs to know, if you've not already done so, please consider clicking like on this video if you got something out of this. And of course, consider subscribing to this channel to make sure you don't miss any future content and comment below if you wanna see me expand on anything here. And guys, I also take a look at all those things, how many subscribers a video got, how many likes it got, what kind of comments it gets to tell me what kind of content you like engaging with and what kind of content you wanna see us create. So it's an active direct way for you to engage in the growth of this channel and to help us out as well. Here's the last big thing. And what I'm about to say is not a political statement. Is it a legal statement of reality? Police are allowed to lie to you under the law. Yes, you heard me right, and I realize that that may shock and offend some of your sensibilities. There are limits to be clear as far as what lines law enforcement have to color within. They're not allowed to lie about everything. They are, in every state that I'm familiar with, allowed to lie to you about 
a lot of things. You may even say the vast majority of things. And if officers are allowed to lie to you to get permission to enter your home or to get you to confess or to say something that can later be used against you in court, there's a word for that or a term for that. It's called good police work. So again, this is where you have to know your rights because it's very easy for law enforcement when they're engaging with folks who are frankly not used to dealing with police on this kind of grounds to get them to tell them everything that they need to know because they may not understand the fact that cops are allowed to and are highly schooled and trained on how to play these word and mind games with folks. So you need to know that and you need to make sure the people in your life who you live with know that as well. So again, guys, I hope you got something out of this video. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.